Welcome back everybody. So in this video I wanted to do um, a, f a little bit more of a basic pour for new acrylic pourers or those who are just getting started. Um, so I'm just going to do um, four flip cup pours um, on some tiles. So I'm going to mix here but I did speed up the video a little bit to save you some time. So um, what I'm doing is I'm just mixing my acrylics into a glue and water pouring medium. So um, I, I don't measure it, but I, I would say it's probably 60 to 70% glue and 30%, 30 to 40% water. You do want, um, you do want your paint to be like thick enough to not be super runny, um, but not, it's hard for you to see what's coming off the stick there. Um, but not like super runny like you would see on um, like on a Dutch pour. So you want it to be, you want it to run off your stick to a point and maybe create a mound, but you don't want um, a super thin consistency that would cause um, your paint to overly blend. So um, in this, I'm using some, some Violet by Master's Touch, which is a Hobby Lobby brand. And I'm using, um, I think it's called Old Gold by Artist Loft. I'd never used that color before. Um, and so we are just mixing. Metallics are a little heavier. So this metallic seems really thin right here, but it thickens up really quick. So just because they have mica powder added to them, usually they tend to be a little bit heavier. So all I did is I, I mixed some Elmer's glue all in some water and I have it in the mixture already and I kind of just poured it into the cup to make it easier. This color is metallic cobalt blue, which is perhaps one of Artist Loft's best uh, color offerings. And I'm really bad about being out of the frame, but that one's a little runny here, but again, that's a metallic, so it's gonna thicken up a little bit. So um, it's been so long since I have done just a regular flip cup or something other than using the Bloom recipe. I found myself um, thinking, man, this is a lot of paint, you know, because if you're gonna mix um, like a Bloom recipe, which you can see in plenty of my other videos, and if you haven't taken Shelly's course, I have a I have a 15% off promo code um, for you, but the Bloom recipe uses very little actual paint. Um, like same thing with pigments and, and paint, like a little goes a really long way because of the ingredients. And so I found myself mixing this and thinking, oh my gosh, this is a lot of paint for four little coasters. Um, that right there is an interference color by Color Art. I already had it mixed up and it was a little too thick. So I was just thinning it out so I can use it and not waste it. So I used a little interference gold and a little interference blue in these just because um, I didn't want to waste them. I had them mixed up from when I first got some of these interference colors. Um, it actually might be interference green, not gold. <laughs> Sorry, my dog is dreaming. Sorry, it's okay, it's okay. Um, so I um, just added it so I didn't have to waste it. Um, so, I'm just mixing up, um, some phthalo blue now, um, and I'm just going to layer these in tiny little medicine cups. So if you're doing a four inch tile, about an ounce of paint is pretty on point for what you need. So a little medicine cup is almost a perfect measurement. Now, um, I use medicine cups all the time to measure epoxy. So I have them, um, but if you don't want to waste them, you can use the same measuring cup or the same little medicine cup for all four tiles. So that's kind of cool. But the uh, this is Thalo Blue. This is also Master's Touch. Now these paints are um, thinned down a little bit, so they're a little bit easier to mix than maybe a tube paint would be. But um, So I'm basically just going to layer these in a medicine cup and flip it over on that tile. And we're going to see what happens. There's no silicone in any of this. So 
I just wanted to have a fundamental, really basic um, video. So I'm just going to layer them. Oops, if I don't spill them. When I first started paint pouring, I was like so overwhelmed by all of the things that you can do that I was like, where do I start? And a friend of mine was like, just start with a flip cup. And I was like, yeah. And like, you really can't screw up a flip cup, y'all. Like you can, it's going to, I mean, your composition can be different and there's things that you can do differently and there's things that you might not like or want to like tip off of the surface, but a flip cup is super fun and easy and it's a fun way to get into paint pouring. And if you're like, I've always wanted to try this acrylic pouring thing, but I'm afraid to get started, just do a flip cup. I mean, it's the composition kind of creates itself. You're not really going to have to be like a master artist to make it look cool. And it's fun to start off on these ceramic tiles because you can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's and they are relatively inexpensive. If you are looking to see, kind of try your hand at something and you want to test colors out, it's a really fun way to do that. And you're not going to burn through an entire canvas and waste that kind of paint. So you see all I did was flip the tile over and then flip it back over. And now I'm just letting it settle, tapping the bottom a little bit. But anyway, like you're not going to waste a lot of money when you're first getting started and you can give them away as, as gifts for your family, especially if, you know, you're just getting started, like why not? So while I'm letting that paint settle, I'm just taking some of the leftovers out of the cup and hitting the corners. We're going to tip that off anyway, so it's just going to help our paint get to the corners. I am using a culinary torch to torch the bubbles, and you can see my torch is filthy. And um, you don't want to torch too long because you can burn your paint. But now we are just slowly tilting. What you don't want to do is you don't want to just tilt super fast because you are going to uh, stretch out your paint a little bit more than necessary. And if you do have cells or you do have silicone or something in your painting, um, that's going to impact the composition. But in this case, we're just, we're just stretching slowly. What I like to do is start with one corner and kind of tilt in a, in sort of a circle where you're going from one corner and kind of following that to the next corner and then following it down to the bottom and then to the other side. It's a little bit, um, a little bit less dramatic in the, in the tilting. So now I'm just cleaning up the edges. You can see I use K cups, um, to prop them up on. Say I do the same thing when I resin them, I do seal my coasters with resin. And, um, if you're unfamiliar with how to mix resin and all of that, I have a how to mix resin video. I'll try to remember to link it below. I also have a 5% uh, promo code for KS resin, which is a high quality and affordable resin. Um, so in the description box below. And so that's a really um, great resin to start off with. It's food safe. It has high heat resistance. So um, UV protection, all of those things. So now we're just doing the second one. Um, about midway, I realized I was going to run out of paint I had to mix some more up. And, um, that whitish color is an interference color. So it looks white, but it's like an interference green or something. And, um, so the, like super easy to get started. What I would recommend is if you are in the United States and you're getting started, like hit up the sales because you can, um, easily spend tons of money on paint. Start with some basic colors. You can do a lot with primary colors. And uh, what I did when, before COVID, of course, is I would hit up Michael's and Hobby Lobby and all those places when they had the 50% off. And I would stock up on paint, like one small coupon at a time. And now I've, you know, gotten a little bit further in my journey and I do a, a little bit more high-end paint than I did when I first started. So I do um, a lot from online stores like Blick or Jerry's Argorama, um, because I really love Amsterdam paint and things like that. But, um, for regular, just flip cups, even ring pours, things like that, you, you don't necessarily need the, like the golden acrylics and things that are a little bit more expensive. Um, so Artist Loft has a great line, uh, Master's Touch is Hobby Lobby's line, 
um, Hobby Lobby marks down their paint every other week for 50% off. So, I mean, if you're going to stock up, that's a good way to do it. But I started off with just a few colors here and there, and then I would mix colors to make colors that I wanted. Um, so here, I'm, some of these I hadn't even used before. I just opened them up and used them. But I, when I first started paint pouring, I made coasters for people, and people love them. Um, and people would make special requests. I want coasters in these colors. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I remember looking at a pair of my parents' coasters that were really old and I was trying to match them to their living room. So I was like, can I redo these coasters for you? And I took them home and tried to match them with the colors in their living room. And so it's just fun to practice. Um, flip cups are also a really good way to use paint that you've already mixed so it doesn't go to waste. So I am going to try to incorporate um, as much as I've been practicing on the bloom recipe and all of that, which I love so very much. I am going to try to incorporate um, some more typical paint pouring beginner recipes and just simple things because I realize that all of our viewers may not be um, doing the bloom or may not even want to do the bloom. And we, you know, want you to benefit from the regular acrylic stuff too. Some of our very early videos have um, a lot of more basic techniques and I was still in school at that time so I was limited to how much I could film. So now I'm trying to film every time we paint. I still have a bunch of tiles. Um, these Home Depot tiles are a little bit bigger. They're like four and a quarter inch. And I don't like them as much as I like the ones from Lowe's because the ones from Lowe's have a much cleaner edge. Uh, but the ones from Home Depot seem to work okay on um, regular acrylic pouring. So I was like, well, I, why not do some of those videos with y'all? And I have to prepare for our next market day anyway. Coasters seem to do very well. Some people like the bigger coasters anyway, so might as well. Kind of do a little bit of both. I really like the composition on this one. I like, um, I think the, the colors kind of turned out kind of galaxy-like, which is always kind of fun. Another really fun thing to do um, when you're first starting off with acrylic pouring is vase pours. They're so much fun. I would buy the, um, like the super packs at Michael's of like 10 canvases when they're on sale. And I would get like the square canvases or the you know, the 10 inch or the 12 inch, even the 14 inch and do vase pours. Um, I learned that from mixed media girl and she does some amazing ones and the composition kind of does its own thing. And that's, um, it's really kind of fun. And the vases turn out beautiful. So like last year we gave away a lot of them for Christmas and, um, mm -hmm. we had special orders for them. But that's another really fun thing to do when you're first starting off with acrylic pouring is vase pours because you get a painting and a vase out of it. And um, it's it's sort of like a flip cup in the sense that the composition kind of does what it wants and um, you just kind of along for the ride. So I think this is the one where I figure out I have to mix up more paint. Um, so bear with me there. But... But yeah, I hope that this video is helpful. I um, was going to try to walk you through all of the paint mixing and, and I will do my best to do more of those. But the, um, you know, just for the sake of time, I didn't want it to be a super long video. But I, I showed you the, the layering process and kind of what your paint consistency looks like. You can tell it's pretty thick because it's not just flowing out of the cup. So and that's kind of what you want. Same thing with ring pours because you want your composition to stay. You want your colors to be distinct enough and not bleed too much together. So, um, and you can tell, like, I'm, I'm super messy. Like, look at my hands in this video. Gross, right? But I try to use a lot of the paint that runs off to grab the corners so it's, you don't have to quite use as much paint on the surface. I really kind of lucked out and mixed up almost exactly how much I needed for these except for that one color I had to do twice. And um, so I had, I only have cobalt, metallic cobalt blue left over from this pour. So <laughs> that kind of worked out. 
because I, I do save all of the, the paints that I mix up in little condiment cups so I can use the paint again later. So I have that color mixed up already. I'll use it in another pour. I'm hoping to do a ring pour for you guys. I'd also like to do an open cup pour um, so you can just see all the different ways that you can do acrylic pouring. I will probably focus on doing some real basic stuff on some tiles and then we'll, we'll do some canvases too. But anyway, I, let me know what you think if this was helpful. Um, our social media stuff is below. If you want to follow us there, we'd love it if you would like and subscribe if you're not already. Leave a comment and let me know what you thought of this video. If, if you're new to paint pouring, I would love to know and uh, love to know what you would like to see more of. It has been a super fun journey for me. And um, I will post a picture of these after they're resined on our social media, um, after they dry. But I, I do seal them with resin so that they're food safe and um, able to tolerate temperatures. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.